Yeah, man. Good luck. Five o'clock. Okay, enough waiting, guys. Welcome back to the GT Greg channel. Today we're looking at the active pedal from Simicube. I've been waiting for this bitch all week. Really, well, let's get that straightened out. It's been quite the uh, the wait. It was stuck in customs for a week, so. Okay, we're gonna unbox this bitch, get it strapped up to the simulator as quick as humanly possible. Uh, wow, voice is peaking, let me fix that. Get this thing lo locked and loaded up here as quick as possible, and then we'll, um, we'll do all the shit that I said I was gonna do, so. Um, let's unbox this thing. Because listen, guys, I got this two hours ago, and I'm the type of person that will open a box on his way home from Best Buy. So, um, so it was quite a challenge for me to actually be patient and wait to get this thing opened up. But let's get it cracked open, see if this thing's worth the $2,200 price. $2,200 for one pedal, and this is just one pedal, guys. Um, I'm not built like that to buy all three of them. So let's get this bitch open. Let's get this thing up. Open overhead. Boom. See what's in the box, take a look at some of the parts. We'll see, see if some of these parts inside here. here. Sorry, I had to get the mic set up. I forgot to set that up. And see if this thing is uh, worth its weight in gold. 
all this hype and talk about it, everyone saying how amazing it is, blah, blah, blah. I actually paid out of pocket for this. No gimmies, freebies, or never has been, never will be. Everything on this channel will be bought by Greg um, and probably sold by Greg at some point. Christ, it's heavy. Very heavy. This is going to be a hell of a bitch to install. All right, let's see what's inside. You guys can hear me? Everything looks, everything looks good? Okay. My quality just switched. Is it bad again? How is it now, Dick? It should be perfect now. I just turned off the other one. Let me know. It's been a while since I've streamed. I assume it's okay, but I think the camera here was recording some audio too, so we'll see. And I think I could do one thing here. Better now? Good, good, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get the resolution or the exposure turned up a bit. Let's look at this bitch. Oh my God. All right, I'm gonna have to take this out of this box. It's like another box, a hey. box with a box, with a box. Oh my God, it's heavy. All right, heavy little unit here. Nice little box though. This is like, um, what the hell is this? It's like some plasticky type of foam material. <laughs> Unbreakable, it looks like. Thank God, because I was worried about the DHL guy. Okay, this is not an issue. I was worrying about the DHL guy um, just chucking the package on the front. <clears throat> Fuck you. Okay. Open it up. There we go. There's all the good stuff. Look at this. It smells good. I don't know why it smells good. It smells like it smells like uh, pine and something. Let's have a look at some of these parts. Um, I also ordered the like the compatibility plugs for the Houston Veld Ultimates. I don't know if you guys know, but I'm running these. And then we're gonna put this semi cube in its place. Or if it doesn't fit on my inversion rack, then we'll end up uh, mounting it and drilling some holes and mounting it. So, like I said, it's gonna be quite a long video, but let's see what this, let's see what this thing's about. Much better, much better, much better. Audio is good. What a box. Yeah, the box is awesome. It's huge. Although, one of the shittiest products I've ever reviewed, which is this thing, had probably the nicest box. So, that just goes to show. Boxes ain't really worth it. Uh, there. Okay, so this is some Velcro, um, basically Velcro pads that will allow you to mount things and have it Velcro. We got some M4, M5 bolts, M5 bolts. I'm assuming this is to mount the pedal to whatever you're mounting it to. We're going to be mounting it to the top of the SimLab inversion deck. So that's good. I'm not sure if this Allen wrench came with it or if it just had it laying around, but there's an Allen wrench that came with it too, so you have enough to mount it up. Oh my God, I hope my girlfriend never sees this video. Um, this is the module that will connect to, I believe, the SimiCube 2 base. Have a look. And it looks like a USB-C connector here. This part goes into your SC2 system, which is cool because you get to reduce one wire. If you listen, if you're built like a like a you know, like a G and you have a ton of money, this is gonna be um, this is gonna reduce you down to one USB for both your SimiQ pedal and your and your um your steering wheel. Obviously you got a power supply. Looks like the same power supply on my my direct drive wheel. Let me take a look real quick. Hold on. Yep. Yeah, this is, it looks like, well, at least the sizing is the same as the, the Simu Cube 2 um, steering wheels uh, power supply unit. So, you know, if you have the, the 3D printed mount for your, your unit already and you have an SE2, you can use the same one it looks like. I'm gonna try it out. I'll print one of those tonight 
and see how it works and let you guys know if that's a direct fit or not. So that's the power cable or power supply unit. I'm worried about the power. Oh, this is just your power supply cable. I'm worried about this thing. This is the one thing that pisses me off with these uh, these manufacturers. They always give you some short ass cables. It never reaches anywhere you need it to get to. And then you're left kind of screwed with this weird, really weird looking scenario. So this certainly does not look long enough to get from my pedals to my SE2. But we'll have a we'll try that out later. That's gonna annoy me. I can tell it already. USB-C cable. Heavy duty, pretty thick. Got your instruction manuals, we don't give a fuck about that. Um, some stickers, again, you know how much we care about that. I'd much rather save 35 cents on the price of this unit than get a sticker. Um, what else is in here? That looks to be about it. That looks to be it. Now we're gonna bring this big bitch out of this. Oh my lord. This thing's like tack welded in place. Oh shit, this is not a game, bro. This is not a game. Well, you know it's packaged safely. This thing is not budging or moving around. I may actually stop my stream. Come on. And here we got it. Holy smokes, that was a mission. Let's get zoomed in a little bit. This is the SE2 active pedal. You don't need to see me anymore. I'll take my little head out of this picture here. Boom. And this is what we got. So it doesn't it's not as big as uh you know when you look in the ads, it kind of looks super huge. It's not that it doesn't seem like that much of a, a longer pedal than let's say an ultimate, maybe like four inches. So um yeah, that's pretty cool, I guess. It's got a little motor right here. Obviously, this is your little servo motor, it's got a ball and screw in here. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but I'll try to zoom it in. That little, this is how all motion works in direct drives. So most people don't even know how like the motion systems work. It's basically like a big ass screw that just gets twisted up and down. So that's, that's what's inside of there. And it's a very high quality one too. It has to be. You can't have a low quality ball screw here with, um, with something that needs to feel very precise and accurate. I'm sorry about the, the, um, one second guys. Well, it's going to have to stay like that. I'm sorry about the, the wiggling. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, so like I said, that ball and screw is, has to be very high quality so that it has a nice smooth feeling. This uh, motion system that I have on my rig probably has a lower quality ball screw. So you can kind of feel it grinding up and down a little bit. That's too annoying, actually. Um, but we're not going to be here too long. The dimensions, I don't have them on hand. Um, there is plenty of documentation on their site. That has the document that has the uh, the dimensions. Um, there's your pin number or your product number, your s serial number, rating, etc. This is a different. I don't know what type of material that is. Kind of like a plasticky type of material. Actually, let's open this thing up. Nope. Yes, we are. One second, guys. We're gonna open the bottom up. Take a quick look inside. Hopefully, be able to put it back together. And um, I have a tool that will will get that off. I was worried about that. I don't want to get all berry on people, but like, you know, I'm more of like a consumer per point of view, but I do want to see what's in the bottom of that. Then we'll try to get it mounted up. Look at some of the adjustability, etc. <clears throat> That's really pissing me off now. Um, let's get a different, let's fix this. We need to fix that. I don't like this um, this wiggling at all. Sorry about it.
Yeah, that that shaking was a little too annoying. Um, yeah, let's get the bottom of this thing off. I'm not taking too much of this stuff apart because I'm not like a mechanical engineer. I'm just a guy. But I do want to see what's in the bottom of this thing. And hopefully I have the right, the right bit to get it off. If not, we'll skip right past that and go into the playtime. Let's see. Is it you? It's not. Good question. Cut. Can the power supply be daisy chained if you own multiple pedals? I I think I I think you can actually. I don't know. Um, I did hear that you could do that, but let me double check that for you. I'll have to go on the website and take a look. I certainly hope you don't have to use three power supplies because that's a it's a pretty big power supply. Okay. I wonder if I can. Yeah, here we go. I certainly hope so, man. Like that's that's one of the concerns I had in general. Like that's a lot of that's a lot of um a power supply unit. If I do get another pedal, it'll only be a um throttle. I wouldn't get the three pedal set. Although you guys know I use a clutch probably more than most people in a simulator. A lot of people just do iRacing or a set of Corsa Competizione. I do a lot of manual driving um, on the weekends and I just like to play around and just fuck off a little bit. So I would probably do better with having a clutch instead of a throttle pedal because the ultimates are great guys, but like I really hate the length of throw on the brake pedal. It's it's non-existent really and i really miss my sprint pedals <clears throat> if i'm gonna keep it 100 with you guys i would certainly go back to the sprints from the ultimate so my hope is that i can get well i'll tell you about my goals with this later but my hope is i can get the feel out of this brake pedal um that i really want so that i can have more fun in my simulator because that ultimate really pisses me off actually it actually makes me mad all right this bottom plate's coming off. Let's have a look. Okay, we got a PCB board in here, some wire connections. There's nothing really much you can see. Um, if any of you guys are like wizards with boards and stuff like that and know what these things mean, I certainly do not, and I don't intend on learning it. Um, all I need to know is if it works or not, and I think it does work, but we'll find out shortly. I have started watching that guy that, that rebuilds boards and does a lot of micro technology, just almost like ASMR type of... Uh, I'm not taking the PCB off. This is as far as we're getting, but this is what the inside of the bottom looks like. And then we'll we'll talk about some of the adjustments as far as the, the pedal faces go and the angles and shit like that. And then we'll get this thing mounted up in a couple minutes, hopefully. The good part about this is that you guys can see, it has these slots right here. So your mounting is gonna, you have way more options for mounting with this slot type of, this slot type of design versus like a single hole. So uh, I'm pretty certain I can get it in almost anywhere on that rack, but we'll find out in a second. What else? So 446W, curious how much it, I'm curious how much of seven is gonna use an average and max. Oh, of course, it depends on, I have no, so 4.6, oh yeah, 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 okay. So there, yeah, 446 watts it sounds like you saw and that you're wondering how much it's gonna actually use in game, don't know. That's a, that's a Beano question. Uh, as long as my lights don't fall, like don't flicker off, I'm good. I'm running a lot of electricity in this room too, man. I got the SE2 powered up. I got an air conditioning unit sitting right there because it became Swamp Ass City in here yesterday. We're getting really hot weather here in Delaware. And um, the three monitors cook, put off a lot of heat. And I have two computers in the same room. So I have basically, I have the 13700K on my on my gaming desktop and a 12900K on this. They both have 40, one has a 4080, the other has a 4090 in it. And um, this room gets warm, so the last thing I need is more high wattage equipment creating heat in this place. It's not very comfortable. Yeah, I'm surprised this bottom panel thing is like a little plasticky plate. I don't know what type of material that is. It looks, it almost looks like fiberglass. It has this little threading on it. Maybe you guys can see that. It has like this little um, texture to it. Not sure what that is. Any questions or any scenarios you guys want to see, please let me know. 
Um, if you haven't, take a chance to like the video. Don't have to subscribe, obviously. Um, but the likes really do help out a lot. I practice that. They say that often. Uh, if you like and subscribe and hit the notification, don't hit any notifications on any videos, guys. You don't want to be a slave to your phone. So try to reduce the amount of notifications you guys have on there. But if you do enjoy this type of content, please subscribe. Helps me way more than you can think. It doesn't. The truth is it helps people's egos more than people think. Um, I'm still going to do this shit either way. So that's that. This is the active pedal, guys. So this is where the load cell is. So as you guys know, this thing uses load cell in combination with motor position to create the effect on your 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 foot. <laughs> um, and it's a really cool, actually, it's a really cool technology I think people have been wanting for a long time. So, you know, I always tell people, like, the direct drive system just opens up a new dimension of feel when it comes down to cars. The motion system takes that to another level, especially if you have a decent one. I tell people that the motion system just feels like upgrading to a direct drive from nothing uh, for your body. Uh, the GS5 was also the same way. GS5C is a very, very good um, immersion-oriented tool, and it's kind of like having direct drive for your body. And that's exactly what we have here with the uh, motion system in the SE2, and now we have it on our feet. One thing I am going to test, guys, is this motion system has uh, the ABS effect built in. So when I am in the ABS, I feel the front of the chassis kind of bouncing. And I'm wondering how much that gets offset by this. So I'm going to run all my tests without motion, and I'm going to put the motion on and let you know if it's worth it. Because if this thing ends up like feeling just the way my motion system feels like, I'll probably end up selling it. That being said, uh, we have some adjusting points right here. We get to adjust the pedal faces. So if you need a little bit more kick out, we're good. Um, I haven't tried to move it. it. No, it does move. Okay. So with no power, you're able to push the motor back and forth. I'm not sure if that's good because I do know on my 3D printer, if you move the, the servos around a little bit, it can actually cause some problems. So I'm not going to do that too much. But it's a good looking unit, as you guys can see. Um, the finish on this is really nice. The motor looks nice and packed in there. I'm just wondering why this is such a long unit. I don't know what's back here. And then let's look at the I.O. So we got obviously an input for pedal one, pedal two. We got our power button, which is excellent. Power in, power out. There you go. There's your jumper cable right there. I'm not sure who asked that. Um, Sim Racing 604. I believe, you, I believe your name is Mike, right? Uh, I've watched your stuff. I love your channel, by the way. Um, yeah, this power out has, looks like you could daisy chain it. So that's good. You don't want three of these little units all over the place. And then your SE2 link. So let's get this thing sized up. Let's see if it's going to fit. And if it does without issues, we should be rocking and rolling within the next like 10 to 15 minutes. So I need to move some cameras around. But before I do that, are there any questions on this unit? Anything you guys want me to look at really closely? I can bring the camera in and get it some, uh, some close-up pics. Looks like the face is quite low. It does look like it's quite low, actually. But you know what? In this case, that's a great question um, or great comment, right? So it, the pedal face is significantly lower, and that's something I was looking for because I want to get more of my foot on the top of this. So right now, um, the way it's sitting, I think it's I think the dimensions were 220 millimeters. Let me have a look. Um, I think it was 220 versus like the 250 of the other pedal. Let me have a quick look and I'll let you know what the truth is. Hmm. Oh, active pedal. They put a lot of energy into marketing this product. I will tell you that. A lot of energy into marketing this product. I don't think the marketing, well, I think it actually worked on me because I got a little bit of FOMO. Uh, where are the dimensions? Active pedal dimensions. This room is already steaming hot. I'm not going to complain, though, because I've been whining about wintertime forever. And I'm very happy that summertime's here. It's just I need to prepare some things. There you go. Anyone on, my, anyone on here make sure? Like the, yeah, yeah, like the video if you can. That's, that helps out. It actually does help out. Not just the ego help. Specifications. Okay, so it's 250, 250 millimeters high. Don't know if that's accurate or not, but I, oh, never mind. Here's the mountain dimensions right here. Probably should have looked this shit up before. 
pedal movement file here. Okay, so it's 225 millimeters from top to bottom. So from this point, Jesus, I got this is at least at least eight pounds. Um, so from here to here is 225 mils, which is cool because my ultimates are 250 and I wanted my foot a little higher in the pedal. So this should solve that problem. Um, there's no, it doesn't look like there's up down adjustability outside the pedal face. So yeah, right here, have a look guys. So right there, come on camera. And it looks pretty orange probably because of all this background. Doing a live review is a uh, kind of strange actually, but there we go. I can focus on, on that. So, and it's very hard to hold this thing up. So bear with me. Um, you got about what looks to be five millimeters up and down of, of maybe 10 millimeters, I'm not sure, uh, up and down of, of adjustment for the pedal face. So you can go up a little bit if that's what your concern is. On, the, on their site, I don't see where you can order a pedal without power supply. You, I don't think you can. I don't know, actually. Oh, you know what? Something I did notice is they each, each time you went to go look for the product, like the two pedal and the three pedals were different product codes. So maybe they just ship it out like, I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna work for people who are like me who are like, I don't wanna spend that much from the get go. And then decide it's, they want three pedals. Like, I don't know how it's gonna work because there has to be some type of discount, obviously, considering the power supply units no longer required. Um, some of these cables, which are, seem to be like pretty decent high-end cables, aren't required. So that's, that's, I don't know. We'll have to see how that thing plays out. I assume that down the road, um, people will just buy one like myself and then they'll be like, oh, I need to get another one. Um, and then they'll probably have a product that's just pedal only or upgrade, an upgrade pedal that's maybe $200 cheaper. Or maybe it's $400 cheaper. Let's put pressure on them to make the secondary pedals much cheaper. It seems like it's about 200 though, considering the amount of discount that you get between buying two pedals and one pedal. So anyway, uh, what do we need to do next? Uh, I'm worried about... Okay, so there's a channel inside of there. So the mounting here, I thought it was just like you mount it on top and then create all these scarring on top, but there's like a little channel down there where you can you can get your bolt in and potentially a watcher um, so that you can mount it properly. But there it is, boys. Load cells here. Oh, it's kind of gummy. Interesting. And I wonder what type of connection that is. I guess somebody smarter than myself will find that out. But it's a pretty good looking pedal, honestly, and it don't look that big. Like it's not as big as um, in real life as it look <laughs> looks on on the videos and what have you. So I will say that it's a little bit smaller than I expected it to be. I was expecting a massive piece, the same size as my SE2. Anyway, uh, any other questions before I move on, boys? Yes, I'm wondering. I'm just wondering about that exactly. What did I miss? Maybe the supply is rated for these pe for three pedals potentially. Uh, commenting for the commenting for the algo. Thank you, Darwin. Uh, cool. I think we're caught up. Excellent. All right. Um, what I'm gonna do is probably screw up the exposure of that that video over there. But I'm gonna move over to that area of my room here and um, unbolt the ultimate. I still have to keep the the module for the open. <laughs> I don't know if I can even do this because I ordered the I ordered this. Um, these these modules from Simicube that still aren't here yet. I'm gonna have to cancel that. Um, that connect the SC2 to the wheelbase, so I can get rid of that USB connection too. But I think I'm gonna have to run both. So I'm gonna move over to the pedal section and start to get this puppy installed. But uh, I'll probably have a difficult time seeing comments, so I'm gonna try and bring my mobile phone over there. If you guys have any questions, please post in the chat. Dick, send me a, if you're still watching and I don't get anything. If you can send me a Discord, that would be great. Uh, but we're gonna move over to the other side.
That's me. That's that. Me again. What the fuck? Check the connected device. Okay, I think, ew, look at the dust on that thing. Uh, greetings from the yeah, Bermuda. Norman, how you doing down there? I love the way you rub that in every single time. I wish I was there. Cute I love you music. Here we go. There's your I love you music. Um, okay, let me get this thing mounted up. I got to get the ultimate off, though, so you probably won't be able to hear too much. I'm just going to wrench on that for a little bit, try to be quick. And if I turn the audio back on for that camera, I think I may be able. You may be able to hear me. But it's gonna sound like dick. Just, um, just, uh, sound. I think that's Cam Link Pro Four. Off, maybe we'll see. Any? Can you hear me over there? Overhead cam. Yep. Can you guys hear me? Let's get this uh, ultimate undone.
the easy part is getting it off. It's going to be quite a pain in the ass holding that big ass pedal up. And mounting it at the same time, so. That's always a good time. Uh, if you guys are wondering how I like this uh, inversion rack, I highly recommend doing it. Um, if you are don't want to upgrade to something that's like you know an active pedal or something like that, then you probably and you still want a little bit more feel from the. I'm not gonna say it from the tip of the uh, the pedal. This uh, inversion made it so so much more um, more detailed in the braking if you can position it right on your foot. It's one of my favorite mods I've done to this this rig so far. Yeah, that's the right one. And it's a good it's a good uh, performance gain actually. I, I saw much better performance, especially under obviously um, Under specific break, like when you're trail braking specifically, I found a lot of benefit from having this. This here, come on. Okay, there goes this puppy. Unplug the bastard. Brake pedal is out. Let's go back and take a look at the size comparison, actually. Let's do that. You guys here? Oh uh, man, yup, yup. No, you did not. Okay, not sure what that meant. But yes, I did. Um, size comparison. This is well, yeah. Now it dwarfs it. So here you go. This is the um, obviously the semi cube pedal, and this is the Jesus. So this is tracking stuff off the desk. This is the other one. So yeah, pretty hefty boy actually. And whatever I said earlier was complete and utter bullshit because that is way more than four inches. It's double the length. Cool. So yeah, interesting. Let's see if this thing fits. I may have to move the whole rig back a little bit. Let's find out. Camera is still on the rig view. Overhead is still there. Does that still work? Oh, uh, you know what? I um, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Yeah, what camera is this? This is camera three. Overhead cam. Let's go to camera three. Maybe camera four. This is different. So overhead cam. Um, multi view, it's not that one. This is very strange. Maybe something's not plugged in on it.
That should be two. Three. What? Here we go. Sorry. Messed that one up. Yeah, okay, there you go. So this <laughs> this is the obviously the the SC2 or the I can't I can't stop calling it an SC2 pedal. Um, I think that's gonna be the branding that most people call it as an SC2 pedal. But look at this. Dwarfed. Yeah, that's absolutely dwarfed. So we gotta figure out how to get this into that position. I don't think it's gonna be too hard because the front, well, shite. Oh, I don't think it'll be too hard. We'll figure it out. We got plenty of channels to use, but there's your difference right there. <laughs> Look at that. It's a fatty. And keep in mind that we are inverted, so we're gonna need to go as far up as possible. We may need, we may need to bottom mount this, so let's find out. Let's find out. What am I using here? Overhead. Big boy, yeah, yeah she's, she's a big, big girl. girl. Let's see, uh, let's, let's get, get some test fitting in place and then we'll, we'll decide, decide if we're gonna mount it on top or bottom. Oh my lord. This puppy is very large. So we need to get it so that the face is like right here. And it's hitting my wall. So let me, um, let me see how close that fitment is actually. This is probably gonna blow out the camera, but bear with me for a second. So we need to get this thing like right there. And then hope that we can get enough angle out of this pedal so that we can um, mimic the same position as my, um, as my clutch. So let's make sure we got a, a bolt in here ready for this thing. I need to move that out of the way. We got some T-slot bolts here. And we'll just stick with the same, the same bolts actually. Now if you met it, if we mount it on the ground, on the bottom, whoops. It does hang quite a bit off the back, but it's not that big of a deal. So I'm almost tempted to do it bottom style, but let's see if we can get the top in place. Let's see. You just you got, got a three, three pedal, pedal set. set. Let's, Let's go. go. How do you love it? 13, 13 pounds a piece. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a heavy one. Heavy, heavy, heavy one. Good, Good thing, thing I, uh, Good thing, uh, I used to lift a little weights. Should be able to get it up. And I think once we get, let's actually see something real quick. I think if we pull it, as far forward as we can, we can see if we're gonna get a... There we go. That should be perfect. But I do have to slide the rig back the moment I, before I turn it on because it's gonna hit the, the edge of my windowsill here. So let's get these, these bolts that were supplied. Now they're all over the floor. really just need two to seat in there properly and then we can get the rest kind of settled up. Um, let's have a look. That's too far. I think we're good. Short one. These are M5s, I believe. So, just make sure that we get in here threaded. 
Nope. It's for M4s. Shite. I have some M5s I think I want to use instead. Because I don't feel like doing those channels again. I'll be back. Stop for a cable mount there. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Okay. That music isn't too loud. Is the music too loud, guys? Oh, there is no music. Let me do this real quick. Okay, and then okay. 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 let's, let's try, try these. these. Uh, these don't, don't work. work. If these aren't the right, the right length, then we'll need to just use uh, the M4 that are included. I'm not sure why they put those thin bolts in. Double check, make sure there's another set. Yeah, M4s. Strange. Strange. We get enough protrusion here. I'm trying to see how far this pokes. M5 didn't happen. So we have to use the M4 bolts because the channel is not big enough for. Um, for, uh, the channel's not big enough for, um, for M5s. So the good news is they provide you some T-nuts, and we'll just use the ones that they gave us. Um, I'll try to show you guys what the mounting of this looks like at some point, maybe. I actually did a review video on this inversion deck, but I never posted it. And I think it's great, actually. It's outstanding little device here. So I think this... I'm being really cautious of that cable right there, boys, because... Um, you want to see me have a full-out meltdown? I mean, full throwing shit meltdown. If I break that, you'll see it. Okay. Hopefully some shit actually is seamless today. This is a really awkward piece to to hold, like um, fuck, to hold and screw at the same time. This is when actual real life friends would be helpful. You know what I'm gonna do? Shite. Um, 
what you guys want to bet that the key, the only key I need is the one not in my box. Nope. You would have lost that bet. Boy. Alright, let's go. God, I hope I don't break this thing off forever. Wow, I need to figure out a way to do this without, um, maybe it should be my angle here. You know what, I'm moving this monitor out of the way, hopefully not tipping it over. Let's get that out of the way for a second, and I think I just destroyed this view. All it takes is one, man. I just gotta get the first one in there, and then I'm gonna try it with my right hand, actually. Fuck off. Most of you guys know this hell that I'm in right now. It's because the, the part is so heavy, which is why it's causing a problem, and I don't have really have a good angle in here. Field of view is ass right now too. Can't see shit. Okay, that's as much as we need. God, I hope that does not fall. Let's get it turned in a little bit more. I feel like there should have been some victory music when that happened. We should have had like, um, like a celebratory yeah. chant or some shit like that, you know? Okay, good. That was annoying. Uh, one of the downsides of inversion, obviously, is <laughs> mounting the shit to inversion pedals is not the most fun thing to do. I need to back it out a little bit. And then we'll get this, uh, the back ones run in. We're only going to run four bolts. We're only going to run four bolts um, because I don't have any more space back there. And I'll show you how weird that looks with the back end hanging out, but no one's down here anyway. No one's looking at, uh, at the back of your sim rigs. It's like the, the most least photo thing is the back of people's sim rigs. I think it is. It is not. How are we looking, boys? We doing all right? All right. You doing all right, boys? Everything good?
Okay, okay cool. cool. I think we're gonna be okay from a position standpoint. That looks okay with me. And I can do one of these numbers right here, which I'll do. Oh my God. What did you guys? Oh, I give a tool for that. Okie dokie. This tool right here, this guy, is what you use for adjusting the pedal face. So I'm going to do that while I'm here. I'm going to move it, tilt it upright to get it closer to my other pedals. Okay. Oh fuck! It only goes like it only goes that way. So I think it's already at its, its max setting. But either way, uh, I'm not too concerned with that, actually, because a good part of that, that angle is to get the right feel. <clears throat> and if we can fully customize the feel anyway, it doesn't really matter. Like, the angle like, is not that important for me anymore, considering I can customize how it feels. So, um, again, we're in the most upright position. Let me get two more bolts in the back. Get the power connected. Use that SD2 cable that is nowhere close to long enough for the SD2. And, and then we should be Gucci and you can start playing. And that's what you guys are here for is the playtime. That's what I'm here for. Getting these back ones in. Uh oh. So I got a problem already. Shite. I gotta, I gotta use the front channels, not the back channels. Okay, not a problem, just another replacement of... Move that over there. I gotta, I gotta use the front channels instead of the back ones. I was hoping to use the back ones to get the, the mounting locations as spread out as far as possible to make it really rigid. But I don't see that happening right now, considering the location of these. The location of these um, these T slots. Do we have a pedal in my mouth right now? Okay, back one was cake, and then one more. Let me get this peanut out. Okay. These may be the first inverted. World's first. We got a world's first inverted uh, active pedal. Guess who cares? Though? The amount of people that care about your inversion of your pedals. Very low. All right, we're almost, we're almost there, boys. We're home free. No, we're not. Front channel, that's right, Greg, remember. I need to take a shower after this. You're sweating like a pig. Position. This actually, um, was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So I was going to be screwed. Okay. Let's make sure the spacing looks somewhat okay. I'm not really too concerned about it until it's, uh, obviously, you know how pedals go, guys. You adjust these things like every day. So I'm not too concerned with the current, um, hard mount. I'm not too concerned with the current uh, location of width-wise in comparison to my other pedals. I just want this thing mounted and able to, uh, to take load from my foot.
whatever, man. That one's secure. Okay, fuck it. I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. Holy oh, shit. Okay. 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 Warm. 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 All right, boys, we got, got the pedals finally mounted. mounted. Hopefully, Hopefully the audio wasn't too bad. bad. Yeah, yeah, I think the scratch is already. I think there's already a scratch on there. Um, um, let me get back to it. Back to it. Okay. okay. Yeah, as, as most people suspect, it does, does look kind of weird, weird having, having one, 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 one pedal and, and one and the rest of the set. set. But again, but again, again, again you give the crap right, right because it's really about feel. feel. My, My double, double audio again. Yep. Yep. It's really about feel um, more so than anything else. So, video feed lost. Hopefully, it came back. Are we good now? Curves? Sweet. Okay, yeah, so that's what it looks like. It does look weird as shit, but honestly, that extra height I wanted or that extra, um, the extra space I wanted specifically for the brake pedal is in place right now, and all we need to do is power this bitch up, um, get the rig moved back about six inches, and then we can start playing. Yeah, <laughs> it kind of matches, who cares? Yep. Cool. All right, let me back this thing up a little bit. And I'm going to move it over a little bit while we're at it. At least a thousand pounds. All right, let me just get, I have to get the rig in position right now, boys. Um, I'm going to just step away and do that for a couple seconds. And when we get back, I'll power everything up and connect the cables and see how this thing feels. Okay, that's not going to work for when I drive, but it is what it is.
for a good location to have this camera. So I still need like another two minutes and then we'll get mounted up. You come with me. Okay. Getting close, getting close. That should be working. And this one should be working overhead. Uh, desk cam. Nope. Fortunately, it will be. Oh, interesting. Overhead cam. Depth three. Four.
Healthy and shite. Let's see if that turns on. Okay. Progress. Okie dokie. Just, okay, cool. Whew. Sorry, boys. Like, this has been a little weird. Um, what I want to basically just connect everything now. So I want to start off with this puppy. Uh, you guys can't see it. Um, the uh, connector cable that has a USB-C in it, that has the SC link, and all the power stuff. So I'm going to get down there, turn this cam back on. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. If not, sorry about it. Power supply, power cable, SC2 link, blah, blah, blah. So this cable right here, this cable right here is supposed to go from the SC2, or I'm sorry, the active pedal to the wheelbase. Ask me how this is going to work out. Actually, you need to go to So hopefully you guys can see, if not, like it is what it is. Like, I think you guys can see. I'm over here. Um, anyway, the moral of the story is we got to connect this cable, which is the USB-C cable, the power cable, power supply cable, and this. So this obviously goes into the active pedal, and then we got to figure out a place to mount this. So I think we may be able to... Before when I was whining about the length of cable, I don't think it's that important because I can mount this right here, like on the side, and then run it up to the SC2. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back, I'm gonna back up from the SC2. I'm gonna connect it first. What the fuck? What? Time to read the instructions, boys. I'm sorry we have to do this, but we gotta read the instructions. Okay. So this does not connect to the SC2, it only connects, interesting, okay, all right, Ethernet switch, Cubecube link hub. Yeah, I don't think this, yeah, obviously it doesn't connect to the SC2 because there's no ports there, except for the SC accessory port, but mounting. Interesting. Yeah, okay. 
Fair enough. So this is going to be another USB cable. Like I was wrong thinking that. Uh, yeah, I was wrong. And here, guys, it also shows in the manual. It shows you what the um, configuration for the linking needs to be. In our case, we're not going to do that. We're just going to go from here. And I'm just putting this shit on the ground for now. Fuck, I still don't have enough space. SC2 link. Boom. I need to pull the rig back a little bit more still. Pedal one, pedal two, SC link, power, okay. We're definitely not doing wire management tonight, boys. No way. What? Power in. Power in. Boom. Power out. Okay. We don't give a shit about you. We don't need power out. We just need a USB cable. Plugged it in, power is off, and we just need to connect this little box to the PC, and I think we'll be good. Oh, shite. Um, where do I want to put this? I'm going to put it here for now. All right. USB cable, looks like it's about 10 feet. Maybe six feet, ten feet. Six feet. Good quality cable though, you can tell from touching it. And shite. I'm gonna just uh get over it right here. Yeah. I use this uh, Velcro. I bought this Velcro um, roll from Amazon for like 20 bucks, and it helps out with shit like this, especially if you're just doing temporary stuff. I'll mount this thing right here. It has more than enough room, even with the motion. And I don't really care about like getting it perfect right now. I just want to feel how it feels. And I know you guys probably want to get to that section also, so I'm going to try and hurry up. Okay, power on. Did you guys hear that noise? Okay, well, we're connected. We got power. We're connected to the PC. Let's see how it feels. Holy shit, we get to drive it. Let's go. I'm going to switch this real quick. 
for this. Testing time, 375 watts, a giant star spot. Ah, so con confirmed, one power supply for three pedals in. Yeah, good to know. Um, I don't know why I'm reading backwards. I'm very curious the ins and outs of this FFB product. Yeah, Norman, me too. Uh, we put this, uh, what do we got to do? I think we're good here, actually. Um, let me see if I can get a little bit better camera angle. I think I can get a better camera angle than that. Is that good enough, guys? Is that okay, or should I try to get a little bit better angle there? Oh my god, what is that? I swear to god, I just cleaned this thing like a week ago. card I'm going to make this a little bit bigger actually let's make this bigger what the hell to the capture card. Let's okay, so let's start. Um actually let's look at this, this all for real quick. quick. I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna in, jump the in the chair. I need to get a drink drink it's hot as hell in here. In here. So give me a minute, I'll be back and then we'll start we'll touching this thing. thing. Well, this is nowhere close, close to how it normally. I almost want to start. start. Oh, oh, I forgot, I forgot to put my seat. I want to feel, feel this thing real. real. Okay. You guys, hear, you guys me? hear me? Let me bring, me bring up, up my stuff, stuff over here, here and then we'll get rocking and rolling. Um, um, I should, should probably look, look at. Okay. okay. Let me um. Let me get, let me get other things in place first, and then we'll worry about that. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. You guys hearing, hearing out of this microphone, microphone now? I mean, I mean, from, oh, yep, yep. Probably, probably echo. echo. All right. We're almost there, man. I'm sorry. I, this is not like one of those shows where they like leave you on a, a cliff 
And then Blake will be back next week. I gotta, I gotta get my bearings real quick. I need to go to chat. And then let's pop out chat over here. This window. That for sure. Yeah, okay. Um okay, good, thank you. Thank you. What do we need to do? Uh we need to let me see if there's a new version of this software first foremost. I haven't been updating this software because I'm worried about I've been worried about um, the dual clutch functionality I have and get that getting messed up if I do something a little too early. But um, I may need to pull the instruction book out. Where is the update? And I should probably put my headphones on because I can't hear anything. software for the pedals. I think so. I'm going to double check. I thought it was built in, but let's have a quick look. Brendan, you may uh you may know better than I did. I didn't know if it was built in or not. Let's have a look. All right, new window. And make sure my audio is going through my Headphones. So I understand the SimiQ is a dedicated pedal that works with a select few sim pedal options. Do you have that accessory to that? I do not. I ordered that like a month and a half ago. You're talking about the connector so I can plug my um, plug my Hussing Vels into the SE2. It still hasn't gotten here yet. So. I may have to put the air conditioning back on because it's like 90 in this room. <laughs> Is the software. Oh, this, let me, uh, let me read the manual real quick. Set, add-on set. Okay, so there's an add-on set. Here's what the add-on set comes with when you buy it. Ding, cabling. Adjustments, force ranges, hazards, safe use, software and user guide. There we go. Thank you, Tuner, Active Pedal Software. You guys should have a link to your software, by the way. Like it should be one of the first, like one of the first things that people can active get can access is like shop all support that should be there. Actually, is it here? Nope. That's where you all this. Uh, 
There you go. Downloads. Okay, cool. Put it at the top where people use it. Um, let's get this thing installed. And I need to stop this over here. I will be um, this weekend doing like a review video, like an official video, not just a stream, but I wanted to show what the in real life experience is for this pedal set, like how it is in real life, like what do you actually have to deal with, etc. Okay. I'll do like a, a clean one. This is why this is why we record them. I can't be in dead silence, so I need to listen to some. There's something in the background, I just can't be dead silence. All right. Um, the software I just I just installed it. I think let's find it. Downloads. Downloads. Set up. Let's get that thing knocked out. I'm surprised they didn't incorporate it, incorporate it into their existing software. Okay. Upgrade firmware. New firmware is available to install. Update. Okay, update the firmware on the pedal. Cool. So, roll not selected. Active pedal. Clear faults. Device repose for us. Press the button to start calibration calibration. Oh, this is what we're here for, boys. Let's get the full screen going. All right. Awesome. Clear faults. Device is currently disabled. Press the button to start the device. Default is in fault state. Clear faults. Break. It's making some noise actually. Interesting. Design. Press the button to attempt to clear the fault and return to normal operation mode. Clear faults. Acceleration force not shown. Press the button to start the device. Start the device. Interesting. I wonder if it's because it's in the utmost position. Yep, that's exactly what it was. Okay, so I can tell you guys by doing this motion, I hear a little, I hear a little scratchiness. I'm not sure what that is, but it does feel like a, it feels kind of, um, it, it feels like a pedal. All right, so let's do calibrate. This is not tiny, but let's do that. Force sensors and calibration mode. Oh, look at that. That's cute. Okay, what do we do next? So let's save it. Low short, low short. What? Oh, this must be um, this manual adjustments or no? I don't know. Configure active pedal. So this low. Oh, does it actually do anything down there? Though? I can't see. I don't know what the hell this is doing. I think it's uh, the position right now is in the low position. 
and a little bit of thick right there. I think are in the middle position. Okay, this is what we've been waiting for, I guess. Um, cool. Let's see. Um, first some configure, what does it say? Okay, that's what we just did. Faults are clear, discard profile changes. First one is high, first one high, first one high. No, but I'm not in the high position right now, am I? Oh, you know what, it's upside down. I'm an idiot. Yeah, I'm an idiot. My pedals are inverted, so it looks, it's literally upside down. Thanks for calling that out, bro. Cool. All right, so that's done. Uh, let's see what linear feels like. You need to add a lubricant before use. Nope. That was one of their marketing things is that you don't need to do all that. I'm not going to comment on anything yet. I'm about my previous break force was roughly, I think, 46 preload. Oh, this is where you get the this is where you get the clutch feel pedal travel. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I was hoping for more travel. I can tell already this is going to be crazy good. Like within just from when you start adjusting that and feeling the effect it has on your feet, like right now, what is what this feels like? This is gonna be fucking so good. All right. Get things positioned a little better. Oh, did I ruin that camera? I don't think I did. Worried about the rig hitting the camera, but um, I wish you could. Uh, where do you do the faces at though? Where you I'm gonna break pedal active? This actually, even at that angle, is not bad. I need a little bit more angle, obviously. I need the pedal face to be. <laughs> what does this do? Oh, that's where you get that two stage feel at. And I assume you can. Oh no. It really does, doesn't look the rest position as far forward as could be. Yeah, I don't think it is either. Pedal position. Interesting. Okay. Pedal position. Curve back down a little lower. What? Uh, okay, I think I think you can flip the pedal face 180. Install. I'm not really worried about like that right now though. That's a good good point. What I'm more I'm more of course more concerned about is the, the length. And honestly, this is just like sitting neutral. So let's see what else we got. Simulator. Motor vibration, ABS. 
Let's take it for a spin, shall we? Yeah, I'm just going to dick around with stuff. Let's actually get in a car and then try it. Hmm. Competizione has a good, a good, um, a good uh, ABS effect, I think. I think. I need to get this center. And hopefully you guys can see a bunch of stuff over there. All right, let's just get in a session real quick. Um, I felt that a lot of ABS would be with the Merc. Let's do the Porsche. Who cares? Porsche is a car to do. GTR. Fourth, it has to be row. Okay. Yeah, weird. I think we have to actually go in and set controls, right? So break. <laughs> All right. Um, we're using the, this one. Green light. Go, go, go. Okay, let's have a look real quick. Why isn't the car stopping? Did I not set the brake? Option is control is break. Save. Maybe I didn't save it. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, let's go and look at this stuff. Let's turn damping off. Why is the, the travel so short? I was expecting way longer than that. Um, we're gonna turn the ABS effect on. Oh, look, we can, oh, sweet, yeah. How do we wanna do this? We should do it one by one. And I can immediately feel it vibrating. Oh, let me turn the motion off, actually. That was one of the things I wanted to do. I'm gonna turn the motion off for now because I wanna I don't want it to get distracted. Uh, I think I told you guys before the um the motion system has an, uh, an ABS effect. Actually I'll just turn the ABS effect off. ABS is already off. It'll slip lock. Right now it's vibrating, it's kind of annoying. The more you touch it, the more it vibrates. So anytime I put like a little input on it, I put like a little bit more input. Let's say going for like one kilogram to two, it gets more vibration, which is pretty interesting. Yes, yeah, RS Mega. Daniel Morad said his AMG feels exactly the same in iRacing as it does in real life with those pedals. Yeah. I'm sure you can tune it to 
Just from, I mean, I've only done half a lap. Am I going to say shit yet? Um, pedal travel was right. It's just, I need it to... Get to kind of... This higher. Want this to kind of stay lower. I was expecting more pedal, more travel on the pedal. To be honest, I don't know if there's a way to. Pedals configured as a brake pedal. Use force sensor input mode. The value sent to the game is based off of the force measured. Force input range. Why is this not? Let's crank it on. That's what we're here for. Traction control. We don't really need that because I have it on the motion. All right, let's get back out. I don't like the vibration, actually. Oh, maybe I could just turn it down a little bit. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. So let's get a couple laps in and then see how, uh, how life is after that. That was too much information, actually. Yo, all right, this is uh, it's interesting. It's almost too much. Let's um. Maybe it's the frequency, maybe? Smooth this. I'm trying to smooth this up. Change it to the last one? Cab, what you mean by what you mean by change it to the last one? Change it to the last one. What do you mean? Mapping, curve mapping. Let's see what the high frequency does. Let's go, go to the extremes and see what it feels like. the fastest lap. I don't know if you guys can see that the the resistance when I uh, 
Oh, you can't see shit actually. My big ass right foot is in the way. Let me try to keep that down. You're gonna have to change the way you drive if you use these all together. This setup is ass, by the way. This is just a baseline setup. Uh, and like, I don't know if I just don't know something, but there's not enough pedal range. Oh, the last one. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Change it to the last one. That is nice. A little less preload. Well, maybe, maybe not. Very nice. Change the curves and you have more travel. See, just doing the travel here is not, isn't really representative because obviously you have experience with this thing already. So like when you're driving, it feels like there's way more than when you're just sitting here. Let me turn this frequency down to five hertz. It's probably gonna thud a lot, but. general profile you can load I'm gonna check in a second hey is that the same Caesar that bought my uh, HRS wheel you actually don't need more travel considering because like when you get on the brakes it does a good job of like pushing back on your foot so you like like you don't need more travel actually because of the the way it kind of resists you. I'm still trying to gather my thoughts on how it feels. Hopefully you guys can see like the action of it here. If not, I'll oh, look over it. Travel's not important, only muscle memory. Yeah, I mean, travel's, travel's important if you want travel. <laughs> muscle memory is good and everything, but if you're looking for more travel, then then you should probably get it if that's what you want. But I, I agree, muscle memory is a big part of it, but also like, the reason why I even have these pedals is because I wanted more travel than my ultimates. But it, it may not like be a large amount more travel, but the fact that it resists you and kind of push your foot back into a further back position while you're st stepping on the brakes, you don't really need travel because as you're fighting it, it kind of bringing you back, you know? So you're always kind of fighting against what feels like an actual, like feels like a break. I notice that I don't feel shit in the steering wheel now. I guess maybe my brain is just only thinking about my foot, but like I don't feel the understeer in the steering wheel now. Maybe I had the wrong profile on this check. Yeah, I had the right profile on. Let's go down to two.
All right, I'm gonna do one more lap here, and then I'm gonna go over to iRacing and see how that feels real quick. I'm kind of like indifferent right now. Like it has good, like exciting stuff to it, but like this, we gotta get more familiar with it. it. Really, is what needs to happen. Let's go into a simulator we're more comfortable with, because I fucking hate it. ACC. It's such a piece of shit simulator. Sorry if you're watching this, but your simulator is ass. Or if you ever see it, like you got that. This, this is unquestionably the most shitty simulator of them all. Okay, let's put the new wheel on and I don't know man I don't know I certainly wouldn't get another one I know that already like one is enough you don't need to you're not even thinking about your your throttle pedal while you're doing this Do you, are, do you, are you guys hearing game audio at all? Travel still loving the wheel. Ah, oh, yes. Nice. Congratulations, man. That's a great wheel. Beautiful, beautiful engineering piece right there. That guy is, uh, he's on some other shit. <laughs> Useful info there about the travel, Greg. Oh, you mean the logar logarithmic logarithmic? Travel's not important, only muscle memory. There's more control at the end. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, let's see how it goes. Let's see. iRacing only sends a Boolean uh value over though, so it only says on or off. It's up to you to, to train and tune or to tune your um you know what I want to feel like? I want to feel how it, how it, see how it feels when the traction goes bye byes all together. Let's try the cup car. I know there's no ABS guys, but I wanted to see how it feels when it um when it dies. That's what I want to see, because like. There's a unique feeling when you just when you lock up and i racing. You know how much you lock up in this car for some reason. I racing, you can lock up more than any other car, any other simulator with this car. But um, I want to see how it feels when we lock up. No thanks. Another link from above from Granite. Oh, I missed the link. I missed the link. What the hell? Your mechanical adjustments in the addition to the oh okay 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 yeah i'll look into that in a second so yeah linear squared logarithmic c seemed to be the best one um where do you see the mechanic oh yeah oh, okay yeah 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 the the initial ones when we first started the game are you guys hearing audio or not I mean, You guys should be hearing audio. You good? Yeah, you're good. All right. Mm. <laughs> Whoops. Here we go. Software adjustments are intended to match mechanical setup. It does feel nice having a little bit of a uh, little bit of a uh, 
vibration in the brake pedal when I turn it down a little bit. This is a, a worthless test. <laughs> yeah, this is a worthless test because it's not going to send the boolean over to seven o'clock. It's not going to send a true or false over to um to the sim. So there's no point in driving this car. All right, let's let's get into a car that locks up a lot. Let's have a look at a car that locks up a lot. Actually, you know what? These GT4s are locking up pretty heavily. Let's just do the Fanatic, though. Let's just do this. GT3R. Practice session. Software adjustments are intended to match mechanical software. Yeah, I'm wondering if there is a... Um, I'm sure there probably is. I'm pretty sure the default settings are where I have it though. ABS on, let's bring that frequency back up to like 10, 10 Hertz. Read around a little bit. Cause I haven't really paid too much attention to the software except for what we did earlier. Let's have an actual look at it. Oh, that's kind of that's kind of neat feeling if you put it down really low it has that the lower you get obviously the more you feel that um that break disc thing. that's the feeling i think most people are looking for the only problem is like it has a, a scratchy feeling to it. it doesn't feel like liquid smooth it has like a scratchy feeling i said just turn off the engine effect no te gusta which one the motor vibration Let's just run ABS, see how it feels. I'm in the I'm in the three R, aren't I? Yay. See how this feels. What is the friction option? Yeah, the friction option, uh, don't know yet. Let's go take a look. It was twenty two hundred dollars US shipped to to my house.
a little bouncy around here. No avoiding idiots in eye racing. That's a fact. Oh man, look at this. Does that include a special plate? Nope, that's just for one pedal, man. There's no mounting plate or nothing. I don't know, man. completely throws off your rhythm of how you're used to driving. So you're gonna have to relearn to drive, man. Like that's, <clears throat> you can't basically hit the same marks and the same pressure that we're used to with the, like a ultimate or a sprint. It's just, it's like learning to drive again. Maybe you not do Detroit? Let's not do Detroit. It's a little too bumpy to have a good like let's do a, a smoother track. Let's do a smoother track. Alright, so let's have a look, man. Like, I don't know. Um I feel like I need a little bit more first. Uh I kinda like that one, but I do like the I do like the preload. Sixty percent, huh? Shit. Fuck that. Let's give it a little bit more force too. Let's try that. Uh, it does uh, that cost some scary Skrilla? Yeah, I know, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. It completely changes the way you have to drive, though. At least for me. Um, let's get to let's get to a better session with a smoother trap because that one was bouncing all around and it was just nuts. But I, I for some reason, I just can't get the feel right now. Red Bull Ring should be a good example. And this car has a lot of ABS. A lot of ABS uh, activation. Uh, yeah. Let's try this uh, GT4. Because I feel like anytime you press the brakes, you're in the ABS with GT4. So let's have another try. And then we'll do some open wheel stuff. Honestly, man, like, I don't know. It doesn't even matter what you feel now because when you're driving, it's a completely different feel. So right now, I feel I feel exactly what you see. I feel a lighter, more progressive uh, feeling. Resistance around 80%. The curve doesn't look like it. What do you mean resistance around 80%? 
Oh, you mean like your max, your max breaking? You're talking like setting your max break to 80%. Yeah, you, you shouldn't have to do that with this now, though. That's the whole point. <clears throat> yeah, download Morales settings. Uh, you want to give me a link to that? I don't know who are these people you're talking about. But if you can send a link, that would be terrific. Download Morales. Oh, is it like something you could download? Add device from Morales setting. Sully, if you can give me a link, that would be great. I don't know who Morales. I don't know who that is. And it should be on my profile in the software. Okay, I'll take a look in a second. I've done this every single time. Every single time I've done this. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, I know, I know. Uh, you're talking about Danny Morad, yeah? Yeah, baby. <laughs> Lord. It's a bit much. It's too much for me right now. I need to turn it down a little bit. A little too much. Too much. Too much salsa, baby. It's too much action. Uh, intensity, let's turn it down. Let's keep the same frequency. Car accelerates so poorly on our first gear. How would they connect to with another pedal? I'm wondering. Yeah, you, there's this little connector things that you basically, um, like the car stops faster for some reason. I don't know why. Um, there's like these little connector things that you plug your, like, let's say you have a set of ultimates. You plug your ultimates into like this adapter and then the adapter into the, the other, um, ports for the other pedals. So those adapters are what I'm waiting for. Now with low cell active or without? I mean, the low cell, 
the only way you can do it is with load cell, right? You can't disactivate the load cell as far as I know. I'm going to go back to linear because uh, that logarithmic love, I can't even pronounce it. Come on, car, for fuck's sake. Uh oh. The settings look to be on point. Yeah, I'll have a look in a second. Literally after I get through this next breaking area. <clears throat> Something is up, man, because like I shouldn't be able to break it to 50 and make that turn. I just heard you could deactivate the lift. Oh, really? How does it work then? why I feel like the fucking car stops immediately I listen I don't know what this thing is doing from a brake output standpoint but holy shit feels like it's like immediately stopping the car let me look at uh, what you're talking about you said Danny, Mor Danny Morad had a um has a profile out there let's see if there's profiles in general system operational profile empty profile same clone import Doesn't sound right. The low cell is the only piece of hardware that's measuring your foot pressure. Yeah, I don't believe that. Like, I don't think you can deactivate the low cell. The whole system is based on the low cell. <clears throat> you can't have a motor position without a load cell. You need some more room there, Mom. All right. Motor vibration, we keep that off. ABS intensity still needs to come down. But let me see um, what if there's profiles out there. Like I said, there's discard profile changes. The linear was the most drivable, man. This logo rhythmic is kind of terrible. And being. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I've, I've seen the Danny video and it's. I haven't looked at his profile though, so let's have a look, look real quick. Uh, YouTube. Let's have a look and hear what Danny has to say. You guys see this? It will be very close to the consumer release, and this could even look a bit different. Just keep in mind, this is all pre-release, and we're constantly changing things. It didn't look like this um, a month ago, so it was very, very bare bones, and just again, constantly working with the the engineering team, giving my feedback as a driver, what I would look for, what. God, the whole video is tuning. I can't watch 20 minutes of tuning right now. This is a different UI also. Look at the pause face. Look at the face I paused them on on accident though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Quickly, you can see how you get 40%. It's really on, on throttle. You can add motor vibration, which I kind of like because um, so you feel those that, yeah, that No, I, I, I don't. <laughs> I just have a little bit more uh, tactile feedback. I'm reserving thought, but right now I don't like it. My foot, which at all is really, really nice. So you can. But like, I don't know it. I've only have like preference. I haven't really spent much. Thirty time minutes on it. of playing with it. More or less dialed in at one um, on the frequency multiplier and just the settings you see on screen. I was happy with. This them. is not the same UI. To the break. This, this is irrelevant get, at this point. You can have your cake. And even, like there's no there's no uh, motor well, multiplier and just the settings yes you see on screen i was happy with them moving along to the brake this is the interesting part this is ultimately where i think lap time will be uh won or lost and in this case one because i've noticed that the, the brake is an insane 
uh, game changer for me and almost like a cheat code. Um, once I, I just went through the settings, I found, you know, again, there's linear, there's all the same sort of curves you can run with um, with the throttle, but on the brake side, I, I typically cubed. would run a linear, like in the past I've run linear brake, but now that I've discovered the, the, the logarithmic shape, it just, it changed the game for me. Uh, not only is you could run log rhythm, look, look, precise, look, 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 but you look, can look. change the curve of look. the brake application and the strength in which uh, where it gets. This is what I run in the, um, the braking phase, in like so how hard it's push for so, it to, um, like it's basically a bigger. It really they call hard. it sense plus so one. In the beginning, it's That's relatively, it. um, let's say, softer here, but I have really good control. So I don't have to push with all my life to actually break the car up to like 30%. I can really just squeeze and get that super nice, easy control. And then when I want the big pressure, it ramps up, it gets stiffer, but I have a larger range, bro, like my race car. But the the only downside is with a normal, uh, let's say like load cell with elastomer setup on the brake, um, the downfall of that would be to get the longer travel, you need softer elastomers and the softer elastomers equals more inconsistency on the throttle, but you can add a lot of, you can adjust the- Yeah, I, I mean, score. I know what this so shit is already. It's just, let's get, I, I don't, the, the linear is obviously the most appealing. This is, this is similar to what I ran in the sprint and the ultimate software. It's just, I know guys, it looks like, it looks like that's what you feel on on paper, but that's not what you feel. What you feel is input and then a force against you trying to push your foot back and you have to fight that force. I'm not sure if I can actually, I'm going to put up the, what's it called? Look at the, I'm going to put up this, uh, race labs. So you guys can see like what my input is on the, uh, you don't need all that extra shit. So let's get the track map off and relative off and standings off. What you need to see is the input telemetry. And that's, um, it should be right there. Yeah, it's in the right spot. Like you look at the, um, I'm a, oh, you know what? Let's get the graph on instead. I'm gonna put the graph on just so it's, that may be bigger shit, but it is what it is. You, you can see like um, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm talking about as far as like the way it resists you But it's it's it's, it's weird man, it's weird it Feels very artificial That felt better actually that felt more like a Like an in real life car Damn sensitive and you set up a uh, dead zone. Linear, in my opinion, is much better because the logarithmic, log whatever the fuck that is, the, the reverse, the concave curve. I personally don't understand a few last ones lined up in a row. That's a low silk and accurate piece in a row. I think. I'm not actually going for my personal opinion. You guys should know that I'm not looking for a race car feel. I'm not looking for a race car feel at all. Looking for a real life sports car feel. Okay, then the car decides it wants to do a U-turn. Good job. Sliding for 30 minutes, you didn't see that. Definitely no dead zone. As soon as you put your feet in close, yeah, I know. Let's do the dead zone. Let's do the dead zone. That's here. Dead zone. 
So I'm assuming you have to just I just ruined it. What the fuck did I just do? I just pressed something and now it's solid as a rock. Oh. That's what I did. Try to five seven. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to get the dead zone. In my opinion, so far, like the most, the best two things are the preload adjustment and the pedal travel. And in linear, that's how I'll probably use it if I keep it. But where is dead zone, man? It does not feel like a hydraulic brake. I wish it did. <clears throat> Where is dead zone? I put map in maybe here. Yeah, there it is. I'm gonna set it to. See, let's go back to the simulator. There it was we just found dead zone just so you guys know that's the dead zone is where right here simulator input mapping the range slider be below defines the pedal force range that you map to a full zero divide between these ourselves to be mapped in linear okay there we go all right um you want my honest opinion man i really miss my sprints oh this feels good never mind hold on I still miss my sprints, even after going through the ultimates, putting the new pedal faces on it. Fucking bot lobby. That's nice. That's very nice. I think I want... Didn't expect that to be full screen. Doesn't matter what you do after that point. Coal tires. I keep forgetting our coal tires. I still, after five years, forget every single time. Coal tires. Let's try to get a good lap in instead of time, though, because I know I was pretty fast here earlier this week. That felt really good, actually. All right, <clears throat> let's get a good lap. Uh, two laps. I'm gonna just try to shut up and actually drive two laps, and then we'll get back to chit chatting. I know where my reference points are. The good thing I will say about iRacing racing already, and you know, I just didn't even get past a quarter of a lap before talking, is that. The, the the way the ABS feels in the steering wheel matches with what the, the pedal's doing. So you can really understand if you're having an ABS moment or not. I just wait for the ass I can break the ABS pedals. I'm interested to see what the brake telemetry looks like, if it's kind of doing like a jig jaggy thing. <clears throat> Keep the goddamn car on track.
Uh, so whatever I was just feeling felt really good. It felt really good. I wonder if I can get the Aztec thing is really close, far too loud. Real life GT3 racer, buddy. Racist Sims as well. Who's this? This week, the Real life GT3. The Aztec ABS solution is very, very noisy. Shaker's doing it just perfectly by changing it. <clears throat> Don't disagree. Uh, let's be honest, boys. Uh, let's take a time. Let's take a reflection moment, actually. Um, actually, before that, I need to set up my stream deck. One second. Well, I'm not going to put that here for you motherfuckers to see my password. This fucking thing doesn't even mask passwords. All right, here we go. Um, So let's ref On this one, this one has audio. Oh, okay. Well, the moral of the story is <laughs> this UI kind of sucks, actually. GT, what do I need to be able to do to save it? Okay, yeah, so back to how it feels, right? So initially when I was testing out these profiles, like I didn't I did not like this um I did not like this logarithmic log logarithmic. <laughs> um I I didn't like that. I didn't like any of these. The linear the linear map is good. Um very good actually. If it like it started to feel really, really good. I think I may actually need to put a little bit more pressure on it, and I don't really run high high kilograms of force um i don't know why all these people like look i'm sure people get it to feel great wait hold on let me smooth it out a little bit more let me try that <laughs> let me see if there's anything else we can do Let's put the vibration back on and turn it down really low. ABS. 
Let's smooth it out a little bit more, maybe to 50. Let's just see how that feels. Yeah, this is what we can do. I didn't really feel like driving that. Uh, I need to find a car that I'm happy with for one, because there we go. Nope, that doesn't have ABS. Ah, just there, there we go. Good old Ferrari. I accidentally registered for the race. <laughs> about to share the life equation then it just went went all quiet guys we need to really have a conversation now listen um um you guys can probably see it on my face i'm not trying to hide shit like they didn't pay me to do this they've never ever um been in contact about anything so i don't give a fuck what they think or what anyone else thinks Let, let's learn it a little bit more before we come up with a decision i would hate to say this fucking thing is terrible um, and then all I need to do is like tune a couple things. So let's get a little bit more time in, but like, I was really looking for the, 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 <laughs> the pedal throw length and it doesn't feel that much more. It doesn't feel like it has more than the, than the, I mean, it probably does, but like you're talking, you're, you're splitting hairs. It's not like. I was expecting a lot more adjustability for the length of throw that you can do with this thing. And as you can see right now, I think this setting, like, I think it's in the most upright setting. I need it to kind of be level, come up a little bit more. Um, it's fine how it is though. It actually doesn't feel bad. I just, it doesn't feel like I'm pushing a brake pedal in. Doesn't feel like I'm putting a, pushing a brake pedal in. Liking causes personal preference, and sometimes people mistake discomfort of something for worse. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Look what we're not gonna do this time, boys. We learn. I like what I like, and it is what it is. The linear, the linear, um, and then the feel is very different than Elastomer bass pedals. Yeah. Press break and fully release it. Problem is I was looking for travel range more than anything. And I don't, I'm not getting the travel range. I was hoping that this very expensive pedal will give me. Um, honestly, it doesn't feel like you're pushing a brake pedal in, in general, in any car. Kind of feels like you're pushing some mechanical thing in. Wow. Is it worth the money? I don't know yet. I need to figure, I need to, I need to. Look, I don't want to be the guy that's just like, oh, this just not worth it. When it's just an intellect thing or a usage thing. It feels Nazi. It feels like you're pushing on a mechanical device. That felt really good, actually. The linear, for me, the linear map is the one you need to go with. Dude. Some reason I just forgot to break entirely there. I found real driver profiles. I found the real driver tuner profiles better than the generic ones. Yeah. I'm. I mean, I don't see profiles. Where do you see them? Where do you Where do you see profiles at? Be specific, because I just looked around. I didn't see shit. I would love to find a profile.
I feel like I'm teasing that to where I want it. Deal with the frustration for a second. I don't know what to say, guys. Like, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Like, oh, I was supposed to test out uh, F1. I don't like it. I think I can tune out what I don't like, though. The logarithmic would absolutely be horrible if you're a trail breaker. If you're, if you're trail breaking. Like that's way too much input, way too early to be trail breaking. You basically have to hit like, it's cute and everything is great. Like I use like that reverse curve in, in the Husenvel pedals, but um, let's try friction. Let's see what that does. Like it's a cool effect. Like you get that initial bite, then the pushback of the pedal. Like it, it, it basically you you push in and it pushes you back, and then you're just fighting that 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 f you're having a fight with the motor itself, and the motor's just saying, no, oh, no, we want this, and then you're you're pushing in like you're pushing against the motor, fighting against you. So that's that's what you feel is the the contention between your load and the motor's output, and like obviously it takes some getting used to. Like if you tune it down, the same thing like with the motion. If you tune it down, like it's, it's actually good. Like it feels good if you don't if you keep everything low and tuned. Yeah, it needs it needs a, a little bit more softer input. Sorry to repeat myself, but load the but load the profiles. Where you okay? You're gonna show me where to load these profiles, my guy. You become my new teacher. Where is the profile? So tell me where do I find this load profile option? Because I didn't see anything that was indicative of a profile load. So help me out here. Discard profile. Oh shit. Whoops. I hope that's okay. Where do you see like load profile? Profile, empty profile, clone, load. That's where load profile is. Oh, this is the one you're talking about. Okay. That's the one you're talking about. Good, good okay, okay, okay. Okay. Let me try that one then. I'm gonna say, bro, like I didn't see any fucking place to load anything. Oh, that's much nicer. Much nicer.
hope his. I get it, it feels better, but I hope his GT3 doesn't feel like this. <clears throat> this can't be what his GT3 feels like. No, nah, it was a. It's an aha moment, but it, like. If this is what his is this is what like a GT3 car actually feels like? Then I I never want to feel the break of a GT3 car. I take my street car, my street car any day of the week. Okay, so this braking area into turn one of VIR is always like, um, I've seen people destroy their vehicles there in real life. So let's see. No, 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 that can't be what real life feels like. Trail breaking is horrible. Or at least I'm trail breaking horribly with this uh with this pedal, that's the real statement. I could tune it down so it's a little lighter, but it feels good. But like it's not Let's see if we can tune this out. Brad is semi cute promoter, so not. A, yeah, I know. That's why. I don't, that's why I was rolling my eyes every time I heard you said the name, bro. Like the guy gets paid from the company to to sell this shit. Not to say he's a bad guy, but like he's definitely in it for. Uh, he's. I don't know his intention, but like he is basically semi cube staff. That's like me saying my company is terrific. It's all great and everything, but like could cool. I want to get like, listen, I got a friend who's a driving instructor. I'm going to have him come over here and tell me how close this feels like to reality of race cars. He drives GT3 cars and um, GT4 cars. And I, I want to hear what he has to say about how this feels. But like, don't I don't believe anybody on YouTube. That's the reason I my channel exists, because I don't. Uh, they're all full of shit. No offense to anyone who's watching that is absolutely full of shit, but like. I don't take their advice or anything on YouTube seriously after doing it and seeing the stuff that people has asked me to do. And like, it's just like, you don't want to trust that shit too much. <laughs> you want to try the shit out yourself. So uh, I appreciate the updates and I know that he's a very, got a good looking channel and a $60,000 rig, which is probably really like $14,000. If that's $60,000 and this is $900,000, that's the clickbait culture. I don't like at all. So, uh, I'm sorry to go on a rant, but I'm fucking tired of YouTubers in general. They just bullshit you until you spend your money, and then next thing you know, you're unhappy with your product. Um, this break does not feel bad, though. So Daniel Morad's uh, setup for this break is not bad, but it feels very soft. It feels softer than the sprints do with the soft settings. So I need like a little, I need like a little softer, smoother, softer on the input because I'm trail braking a lot. I drive a lot of Porsches, and um. And a, a lot firmer on the end, like that. One, that one, it's like felt like you were just pushing through rubber. I don't know. Anyone that lives in the Northeast region is welcome to come by and try this shit out if they want to. Like I live in Delaware. If you're close to Philadelphia, Baltimore, drive on up. Come, te come test this thing out and see how you you like it. But um, uh, I don't like I don't, don't. You can't trust people's what they say on the internet. That should be blaringly obvious by now. Which is why I'm doing this shit live with all like the little fuck ups in here and there. It's what reality looks like. I really have spent a lot of money on this thing and I really don't know how I feel about this purchase yet. From someone who is a target audience for this type of product. So thanks, but don't give a shit. <laughs> Hey, 
and this is like there's no way that this is what like a real driver feels like because I'm putting like maybe 40 kilograms of force down on the on the brake and I'm bottoming out I'm bottoming hitting the bottom of this MEQ. So you can bottom this thing out like that's the bottom. This is the bottom right here. And you feel the bottom. It feels like you're pushing into metal. That's one of the things I really hated about the Simtrex pedals that I ordered was the fact that it had like a metal bottom and out feel on the clutch. But I think this can be tuned a little bit better. Oh, again, I'm just a normal human being, right? If this is what they say is reality, you gotta somewhat trust it. And I'm not saying that Daniel's not trustworthy. Seems like a very nice guy. I've said nice things about him on several streams before, but you know, the CEO of Burger King is gonna tell you to make the best burgers. This is the area right here, like this, this breaking right here. What I was just doing was trying to have like, I needed to be like this much pressure for a very low, much lower percent. So I need a bigger curve here. Let's try to go back to linear and make this a nice little, nice little wall we run into. He's, Cana he's Canadian. Uh, listen, I love Canadians, man. Canadians and Australians, those are like my guys. But like, and I'm not, listen, I'm not saying the guy's lying. I'm just saying, I know what this content creation shit's about. I know what these clickbait titles are about. I've been a victim to most of it. <laughs> and I'm tired of it, honestly. So I just, um, I don't listen to them. I don't even watch sim racing content at all anymore because of that very reason. I'm going to so much bullshit. I, like when Bino comes out with his review site, that's what I'll, I'll trust that one. Bino's, uh, you guys should probably know who Bino is. Bino's coming out with his uh, YouTube channel at some point. I'll trust him. And that's it. That is it. Like you're not bottoming out your pedals, bro. Like Danny, are you really bottoming out your pedals? Breaking into turn one at BIR? I don't think so. Trust YouTuber Gabe Muscle. No, nah, what are you talking about? I'm not saying anyone specifically. I'm saying generally, like YouTube is polluted, dude. It's like the internet has died. The internet's no good anymore. It used to be a cool place. Now it's just where everyone parks their shit. They know people are gullible. They know like people are just like have two minute attention span. So you make a clickbait title, get people interested. Say a bunch of shit like, oh, it's so good, it's amazing, game changer. All these little terms you see are like, it's like, you guys have to read like the book called The Psychology of Influence and understand what's happening in there. Like, these are very old tactics, sales tactics that people are putting in front of you. Even like, look at my title. It says like, the capitalized worth it. That's the only reason why most people, well, some people will watch this video because they're like, oh, well, was it worth it? Like. Who am I to say what it, what's worth it to you? It's just something that you know people will be like, that's like the top of a conversation right now. Bottom and out just to, I know, I know how to, to solve the bottom and out issue, it's just... Having this as a profile where you can bottom it out is not, not good.
I believe that these pedals can be configured. Yes, that's exactly the, that's exactly what you can do. It's gonna take you a long time now. I wish I could make these feel like my ultimates, but have the, uh, let's try a little bit more. Uh, let's try uh, an open wheel car and then I'm done with this. <clears throat> we'll try, uh, we'll do the AMG, the AMG, um, which one which car do I have? Ooh, I am not buying that car. Sorry. Um, let's try something different. Not a, no fanboy here. Uh, just like I was able to buy a pair, I could easily return them. It's been the final piece of the puzzle for two and a half year rig. And does it... Yeah, let me see your rig. Do you have any? Um... Yeah, this feels like a psychology. Yeah, this is what most people will do. So, like, I don't know how long, how much time you want me to spend configuring my brake. It's the most important part of the software. So, like, the in default, the default profile should have been in my opinion, close to something that's usable. This brake setup right now, I get, like you can put anyone in front of it. It doesn't feel much different than like the Fnatic V3s. Like it's just very soft and mushy. It feels like a big rubber. Um, do you have, do you have a, a profile you can share with me? Yeah, I've already updated the firmware. That was the first thing I did. Unless there's a secondary update. Providing criticism and not spending time on the product. That, that's not the ethos there. Just because a person can't afford to buy doesn't mean they should question the integrity of buyers. Just because a person can't afford to buy it doesn't mean they should question the integrity of buyers. Well, I'm a buyer, so I, I would be the buyer. Just because a person can't afford I'm not sure you're talking to me. The other problem, especially with something expensive, is by oh, okay, you're talking to Brandon. Sorry, I was, I was like, how's that relate? The other problem, especially when something expensive, is buyers tend to really, really want to love the product. Yes, yes, I want to be a fanboy, right? I want it to be worth it. I want it. I wanted to buy this, and it just changed my life. That's what you want. The YouTuber influencer stuff is real. It's the reason why I got Fnatic gear in the first place. Hate it. CSW was good real base. It's a hundred percent fact. Like you guys can believe it or not. It's fact. Most of them are lying to you. Most of them get paid to do their reviews. Most of them get like a little 400 to two, $2,200 as far as I've heard to do a review and tell you some shit's awesome. So you go buy it and then you go buy that awesome shit and it ends up being completely ass. Why? I've had four simulators <laughs> because most of the stuff was ass and I got also all of my input through consumption of content. So then I decided I'm just going to buy shit. And if I don't like it, I'll sell it. And that's what you're seeing right now. So <clears throat> I'm probably not keeping this pedal. I'm going to be keep it a hundred with you unless it becomes magical overnight. Eight o'clock. Probably not keeping this pedal. I've had dozens of dozens of high end wheels. Like I am your target audience. It should be impressive. And it is a good feeling. It's cool. It's a good party trick, but like, I want the shit to perform, man. Like I'm not here just for, uh, just for little flappy pedals. I want this shit to actually perform. And I would at minimum like to just set it linearly and have like the throw length be good, which that was Daniel's Daniel Morad's setup had a good throw length. It felt good, but like, fuck, just spent $2,500 on this fucking thing. And it's got to, it should literally give me a handy while it's doing it. <clears throat> Listen, 
The Fnatic stuff, all free. There's some people who charge for the reviews and they have to keep the equipment. So that's they keep the equipment and sell the equipment. You know, that's common. Um, the clickbait is intolerable. That's why I don't watch any sim racing content anymore. It's intolerable. <laughs> we know how much things cost. You don't have to lie and get new people in and say, oh, it costs this much money. That's really fucking annoying. Um, especially when people have literally spent sixty, seventy thousand dollars on their rigs and don't need need, need to feel the rig the need to like tell everybody that shit. Like it's just it's annoying. Congratulations. Like, but you're not for me. And I hope that the people who come here are like, yo, this guy actually buys this, like all this shit I still have, all those wheels I still have. All this stuff I still have. I still use it and it's still part of my and I stream all the time and I'm playing with friends. So like I use this shit. So it's is if I didn't like it, I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't recommend it. But like, you can't trust any of that shit. You guys should all be conscious of the fact that when there's a press run, there's something called a press run. They deliver a whole bunch of products to a bunch of influencers. They all come out with their videos at the same time because of the NDAs they signed. And then they all say, oh, that's good. It's great. It's great. It's great. Oh, you should buy it. Oh, it's good for you if you're this person. They don't ever say, they don't ever say shit like this shifter is ass. You should never buy this, right? This is what they need to be doing. And you need to fund their own their own channels. Anyway, I digress. The moral of the story is um, I'm not really that happy with... I'm not 100% satisfied with this purchase yet, but I don't have an opinion on it yet. Because... Well... I don't have enough experience with this. Like you, what I've said before, I don't have enough experience with it. I have no issues with grad conclusion. I simple people think take the time to learn a complex product like this before giving a thumbs up, a thumbs down. Why wouldn't that make quality YouTube? Absolutely. $2,500 this goddamn pedal is. Um, no, uh, listen, I agree with you 100%. Like, I don't want to say whether you, sh like, I can, I mean, I'm allowed to feel things throughout the process, though. If I have a, if I'm driving this thing and the brakes feel shitty, and my real experience at real time is this feels shitty, then you should understand that, right? So throughout this video, as you watch it back, you'll probably see, like I said, oh, this thing's awesome. Oh, this thing sucks. Oh, I would like this. Oh, I probably wouldn't buy this again. Like all throughout the video, because like these are the things I'm feeling as it's going through. Um, I'm not vetting it. I'm not making sure that it's appetizing for SimuCube. So they send me their next product for free. I don't give a fuck. I'll buy it. I'm not doing any of that stuff. I'm just giving you exactly how I feel at the time of feeling what I feel. And, you know, if it's palatable, who cares? But the moral story is like, you're paying a lot of money for this shit. And I don't want a bunch of kids saving up all their money to get a pedal that's average as fuck. Anyway, let's go back into uh, open wheel car after my little little rant. Um, doesn't matter because not many people will see it anyway. Um, there was one car I wanted to try with ABS. It's Formula F4, I think. F4? F3? Yeah, I want to I want to like actually live with this shit first. Like I didn't even review this motion system for a long time because I wanted to live with it for a while. So I get what you're saying and I'm I'm, I'm definitely not one of those ones just like, "Oh, it sucks. Just to suck, say it sucks or create some content." I don't give a fuck about that. I want it to be good. I want you to buy it and be like, "Yo, Greg recommended this proc and it was so good." That's rewarding for Greg. Not my view count, not any of that shit. Uh, where's the F, where's the, the F4s? Where's the F4s? Oh, let's try this one. Fuck it. It's good enough. Oh yeah, that's the one I like. <clears throat> yeah. But like, if you're, unless you're gonna buy it yourself, just try not to trust those people who sell you stuff. It's like used car salesman, man. And then like, if YouTube just got too much content. It's just weird. Where was that car? Oh, we're at Watkins Glen. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. No, a few weeks from now, no kids should be. No, they shouldn't. <laughs> F1 pedal, F1 pedal profile doesn't feel great. Simicube said the F4 profile came from an F4 driver, but I have not tried. Just go on a test run. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, um... I don't know, man. I wanted this to solve my, my use case. And it very well may. I've been streaming for three hours. We need to wrap this thing up. I'm going to uninstall this immediately after I'm done. Not because I hate it, but because I'm doing an endurance race on Sunday and I'm not using that pedal for the endurance race. I'm using my my ultimate for the race. Otherwise, like, you know how that shit ends up. Let's get this set up and this will be the final test of tonight. Now oh, we have to do street cars too. Sorry. Pedal. God damn it. Uh... Oh, I haven't been in this car in so long. I haven't been in this asking me. I have two pedals on a rig with D box motion, same spirits, G belt. If asking me. I want to see your rig, man. I have, um, I had the GS5 before. It wrecked my back. Mmm, this feels good, man. Why don't I do this? weird that I don't do this. I should do this. Not really much braking needed there. Too stiff. That's good. Uh, unfortunately, this does not have ABS. See if there's any feeling from uh from the lock. No. Yeah, this doesn't have uh, ABS, so there's not really much to report there from an open wheel standpoint. Um, let's put on the vibration. Actually, let's put it back on. Motor vibration, traction control. We should be able to use those features. I don't know if I felt that in my motion or if I felt that in my pedal. Let me try again. No. I think that was, uh, I can feel that vibration in fact that we talked about before, which is okay.
No, I do not. Um, you don't really need to use IRF at BB if you have uh, like any of these direct drive wheels with like their own profiles. Simi Cube has a, a really good, really excellent um, profile system. Yeah. So by the way, so iRacing doesn't send like a signal for like rotation to indicate if that that creates the brake effect, but. Which would be cool, maybe down the road. Um, hmm. Uji, hey, what's going on? What's the verdict on the pedals? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Working on a vid right of the rig right now, but I only have POV vid YouTube channel. Super simple. Did I already follow you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, me too. I'm not a YouTuber either. <laughs> um, but I like awesome rigs. Oh, I really want Bino to come out with his thing. This is not what I want to see. Um, yeah, so basically, if you don't have, obviously, if you have a non ABS car, there's not really any effect you get out of the brake. Um, at least, at least that I've felt. I'm gonna go do something that I know I'm strong at right now. See how off I am. Uh, test drive. We're going to the slife. Are you testing these out? Join the senior Discord channels. Which, as you're testing these out, join the senior cube. Do they have a specific? Do they have a specific um, active pedal? Yeah, I've been in here. Really helpful people in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see. I'm already in here and I always I've been poking around in there for months and months and months. So I was like, I'm more of a lurking reader. Do you you do really need to you do really need it, trust me. I said the same thing because I have the Simicu Pro, but after you can feel everything. What? Hey, can anyone confirm that? Like if I are I R F F B for Simicu 2? I can tell you what setting to use on I. Which 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 reconstruction filter were you using in Simicu? I'll be interested to hear. Which filter you're using? Yeah, people have always said it's so good with Simic too, but We're gonna finish off at the ring. I'm not doing ACC, or I'm sorry, I said of course so. We've already done ACC and iRacing for a little bit. Let us know if, if you lengthen the rods for greater max travel. Looking forward to your thoughts. I kept the active pedal at a shorter length. Um, I'm probably not gonna use them again. Like that, I, I, I get it. They're nice and everything, but like, I'd rather have hydraulic brakes than this. I use the, um, the SimCraft Hydraulics at uh on their motion sim. That's the feel I'm looking for, like a really hydraulic feel. I don't think I'm gonna, like I don't know. just me though like I'm sure everyone else will like them but personally I don't, I'm not feeling it not feeling it at all Let's go back to linear
linear for me is like the best feel. Yep, that's it. Just a couple days. Just jet car a couple days. Maybe. Maybe you need to find and tweak. Yeah, uh, Dick, I, I hear you. But like, I've been to like six set of pedals, man. Like, I know what I like from the get go. I know if I'm gonna like something and if I'm not gonna like something. I don't really need to to do any more with these. A, I'm not willing to put the time or effort into getting them to be perfect for every single car. There's no way. Um, they're good. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure someone will like them. I'm sure someone likes this pedal. I'm sure someone makes it feel good, but like, that doesn't feel good to me. That doesn't feel good to me. I wanted something and maybe it's just the use case I was looking for, but I was looking for something that is closer to my, my street car. And I want, I want like a street car feel for braking. I don't want like, if that's what, that's what braking feels like in a race car, then I'm good without it, but like I'm, I don't ever care about race car feel. I want it to feel like my actual car, and I didn't get it. So um, the moral of the story is I don't know. Like I'm, obviously I can't go into Sunday and um, I can't go into Sunday with this pedal. So it's got to come off either way. It's whether it really goes back on or not. Did they check the manual they have online? Let me see if there's a question before that. What about RF2? I, I don't know if enough. I still have it installed, man. I think I'm good on RF2. Good on RF2. Just do RR Factor 2. And you know what? <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. All right, boys. Well, yeah. I'm going to get out of here. But thank you guys for watching. Uh, I don't have any final thoughts. It's a new piece of equipment. But here's... Let me be very fucking clear with you guys. When I bought this SC2, right? When I upgraded to the SC2 from my Fnatic 2.5, within three seconds, I knew that this thing was the shit. And it's still here. And the entire content on my channel is based around this SC2. All these wireless wheels I do, terrific. I buy the shifter. I know immediately the shifter is fantastic and it's unfuck withable. And then obviously I buy these other shifters to see if they're good and... Lo and behold, they are ass. What else did I buy? Um, this motion system. The moment I put it on, well, I'm a little bit lying here. The moment I got it working right, I knew that this was terrific. I don't have that same initial feeling of, oh, this is terrific. And for example, when I got my sprints, I was like, my sprints are, these are amazing pedals, immediately got faster. When I inverted my pedal deck, immediately felt the difference, immediately got faster, immediately felt better better this is going to take too much effort to get working right for me for me if you're a patient person i'm very impatient if you're a patient person and can hack through this it, it, knock yourself out but for me this is way too much uh tuning and calibration to get a feel right and um i still haven't found it mirage was the closest but it still was lacking a lot um and I'm sure everyone else who bought this pedal is very happy with their purchase most people who spend that type of money are but like I am one of the few people who says, I bought this and it sucks and I feel bad for buying it. Um, and I, I don't I don't feel bad yet. I just need to play with it more. Don't have the time to play with it anymore before this weekend. So the real thing, the real question is, will I put it back on after I un, unscrew it from this, this deck? Because I have to do the race this weekend. There's no way about that. And I'm not doing it with a new pedal because I care about this league. So um yeah, the moral of the story is I don't have any final thoughts yet. You guys saw the video. You saw my impressions. You saw exactly what I said throughout the video. Um, I meant everything I said. And 
you know, if you're offended or butt hurt by it, sorry. Um, but the moral of the story is like right now for me, like these pedal, this pedal is just, it's just okay. Like, I don't see it. It's not like mine. It's not like world moving. When I felt, when I remember the first time I felt this SC2 system and I remember posting on like on the, uh, the iRacing forums about it, it was like, holy shit. This is like a different stratosphere of, of feeling. And this is my first direct drive. So it's not like I had a bunch of direct drives before. Um, but coming from the F Fanatic 2.5 to this, I knew it was a massive step up. Going from the Husenville Ultimate to this seems like a lateral, a lateral step as far as feel goes. But again, I haven't, you know, mastered this software. I literally just installed it. You guys saw me install it 45 minutes ago. So um, the real question is, do I have the the willpower to go learn this or will I go find another set of pedals or go back to my ultimates, which were doing me fine. I was doing quite, quite well. I'm the fastest I've ever been with those things. And, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, okay. So, okay. RF2 is really awesome. But RF2 with LFM is really awesome. I can't, I'm having difficulties getting the steering rotation working right with LFM or I'm sorry with R factor two is the motion system for the RS2 mega. Yes. It's the RS mega motion system. It is a total, it cost me a total of like $3,500 and it's got traction loss. So it's the four post actuator with traction loss. Um, you're wanting out of the box perfection. These pedals are too configurable for that. I didn't, I didn't say that anywhere near that i would like something that i can easily configure and honestly at twenty five hundred dollars or twenty two hundred dollars it should be out of the box perfection i don't know what world you're smoking or what what you're smoking if you think you should go spend that much money on a product and then have to spend the next 45 hours of your life learning curves tuning things like it should have default profiles the same way this se2 did that were good actually let's do this real quick because um i'm why I, I need to make sure that uh uh brake pedal where the fuck is this thing at configure nope that's it so how did i get to this profile again um Give me a second, guys. It's gonna take me to load. There we go. Simi cube generic. I didn't even try the Simi cube profile. So let me just rewind everything I said and try a quick profile real quick. I'm gonna do that just because I don't want to be too harsh. Um, but goddamn. Like, why does, why does every single piece of sim racing equipment require, like, an engineering degree? And I am an engineer, by the way. So, like, I just don't have the patience for this shit anymore. All right. <clears throat> no game presets yet? Yeah, it looks like there's a couple. It's, it just says Simicube Generic F1, Simicube Generic GT, Simicube Generic Rally. And then Daniel Morad stuff is there. Wonder why. Guys on staff, bro. Of course, he's gonna say this shit's amazing. Um, so whatever this is, Formula Four Italia, whatever. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's cool. I mean, open. Sorry. Do they con? Did the con? Did the configure again? I mean, open configure. Ah, we'll see. I'm gonna try this one profile out again and see how it feels, and then. Be done with it. I'm not saying I'm done with the product. I don't know why people are like, it's just, I don't like what I feel right yet. And I actually purchased this. So I'm sure a bunch of people who get into shit for free are like, yeah, it's amazing. if this shit costs you $0, it would be the best pedal set you've ever had. Um, What do I need to load here? What sim is this? If you open configure tab, what do they do? Rod length example. Okay. Configure. So you, you basically, am I in the high position? Yeah, I'm in the high position. You basically set, like you tell the, you tell the software that the pedal's in this position. This is the default position now. If you set it low, it moves the pedal face up a little bit. 
And then let's see what this does. So if I go low and then long, <laughs> low and long. There we go. Now I can get that range. This feels much different though. You guys hear that? Actually, let me turn the noise cancellation off so you can hear what I'm talking about. You're not going to be able to hear what I'm talking about. I'm going to turn off this noise during and maybe. Okay. You guys hear that? That's what I was talking about before. I think you guys can hear that, All right? Anyway, um, let's go back to uh, save. I could just cancel out of here in general. Um, this is the generic. So two pedals will cost more than your motion system. This is the, this is what I wanted to kind of finish the video on is that. Yeah. Two pedals will cost a full motion system and I get the ABS effect through the motion system. So I don't know if you guys see that or through the video or what, but like, actually let me turn the. Let me turn it up with the motion system already. Uh, ABS effect, ABS lock, right? Have a look at my feet. I'm going to turn the pedal. Uh, I can't turn the pedal. Have a look at the chassis, like right, like right here and see what it does when I, when I get into the ABS. Can you guys see that or not? Actually, let me turn the ABS off of the brake first. You guys can see that in the motor. Look, look at the motor right there. That's the motor spinning. <laughs> Sorry, I'm pointing at you with my foot, but like, um, I'm trying to illustrate the fact that like the ABS effect is there with motion. So that whole time I'm feeling like, I'm feeling like the, it feels like the front of my car is like literally vibrating. It feels like it feels exactly how getting into the ABS feels like in my 911. Yeah. And the traction loss, the traction loss, the ABS effect, and even like slip. Like if you're like under steering a little bit, like I don't know if I can show this. Let me see if I can show this. That's a replay that has to be watched. There's no way we're not watching this. How'd I go backwards? Video, I know. I'm sorry, man. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Look at, oh, it's because of rubber. Look, I bounced off the rubber wheels over here. I get enjoyment out of this. I'm sorry. That's sick. Yeah, so like that's that's what I'm also comparing. Like that's a great question actually, is that or a great comment is the fact that 
Like I'm comparing it against the full motion system with ABS effect with traction loss. And then what I get there is just like a little jiggle. Now the real, like the real thing is, do I, did I get the length I'm looking for? And I did not get the length I'm looking for, but I'm going to try it a different position. Um, actually let's do that right now. Fuck it. We got all night, right? Like where it is. Does not doesn't look like beaming NG, not even AMS too. How good is the mega how good is the mega let me go back to where I just missed. Um So two pedals will cost more than most assists, yeah. How good is the Mega Plus? It's very, very good. Yes, we can see. To be honest, it looks more. Uh, can we do a video of the motion, please? That's more interesting. Yes, I will. Doesn't look like beaming NG, not even like AMS2. It probably shouldn't. Could be a, uh, I must have missed a comment. Could be a principle. I doubt that there's much more hidden in the setting to make it perfect. Yeah. You get You get one. Oh. Nah, still, it feels exactly the same, just closer to me. <clears throat> Let's see. ABS is off, I believe. I don't like the bottom out right here. This is bottom out. That's bottom out. That's the bottom. Let me, I mean, there may be something else I got to look at tomorrow, but like, that's enough. That's enough. Is it enough? You didn't change the rod lengthening. Yes, you're correct. You are 100% correct. Good call. Good call. Great call. 
I remember thinking I need to change this and then I completely forgot. I figure. Don't touch it. Still no more length though. You didn't change the route. I did change the route length. No, I, no, you're right. I didn't do it, and I just did it, but it's, there's no difference in length of throw. Maybe if the other setting was set, but, like, uh, either way, like, it's it's nice and lined up with, um, it's nice and lined up with this, you know? Uh, I think I've had it. I'm cooked, guys. I'm, I'm out of juice. I'm going to do one more um, car, and that's going to be the GT3 Touring with a manual transmission. And we're gonna do that that Fieldberg ring. And let's see how the ABS works in this in this game too. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know, guys. Like, this it may be for you, but not this. May not. This is just not for me. I think. I just don't think this is for me. Pretty cool, though. I don't know. I'm kind of like. I want to see how like a street car feels. That's not content manager. Sorry. Is I'm like the shame of the community. Oh, did it again, boys. I don't know why I don't remember to do that. Don't remember to do that. Control break. Yeah, it's too shallow. That alone is a no-go for Greg. I cannot wait to turn the air conditioning back on in this room. Content manager. Completely missed that one. It's too far up. I appreciate the angle, though. I tell if we'll go to sleep about three hours ago. Yeah. ABS off? It just doesn't work with this. ABS is off. Oh, okay. Okay, that feels like a real free car, actually. It just bottoms out too easily. Like, uh, do you guys feel like this should be more travel range? I'll have to look at it tomorrow. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just try tomorrow morning. You guys should hear that, though, right? You could feel that noise too, like the noise is making, you could feel it.
I don't know what I have set right now, dude. I'm delirious. What are you talking about? Like 43, the pedal position? The configuration is only 23. Something is not 100% set correctly. I would agree. What do you think it is? So I got the maximum travel length here. Steeper brake with more power. Uh, steeper brake curve with more power possible. Yeah, you can. This thing goes pretty high, dude. Like you can get it. The fuck was that noise? You can get it pretty high. Did I see correctly? Yeah, the pedal profile set to forty-three mil. While the throw in the configuration is only. The pedal is top orange. Is what the fuck are you looking at? What are you looking at, dude? Right here? Top, top and orange it shows. Out of the way. That gets you, uh, yeah. That gets you more travel. Save it. And go back to linear. What? There you go. Nice call, boys. All right, so this may change things. This may change things, change things, change things. We added 20 mils of throw length. feels very nice when the throw is longer yeah let's turn this down a little bit though let's see oh that actually feels like a hydraulic brake now feels uh very good very good but the position needs to get changed but i think that that's a good that's an improvement that's a an improvement in general hmm. all 
I really got to wrap this up, but I want to try something real quick. Yeah. Is it loud? Uh, I mean, it's not loud. Like you can he certainly hear it. It sounds like somebody's rubbing like paper against like concrete or something. It doesn't sound smooth. You guys can hear that, yeah. Uh, it's not terrible though. Uh, I wonder if this is the semi cube profile, by the way, which I think I've already fundamentally changed, but Uh, okay, I'm going to try one more thing, and then I'm done. Done, done, done. I don't know, man. I need a good ABS car. That's not bouncing around like, um, no, not doing that again. Should get sorted with PID tuning. Yeah, yeah I think, I think you get, like, it feels good now, actually. That, le that, that additional throw length and moving it up a little bit makes it feel much better. Let's do Long Beach, actually. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought I did the LMP car. Anyone know what kind of mechanism is in there? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't know. I think we we showed a little bit about it earlier, but um, yeah. It's a very high-end ball screw. Attached to a servo motor. Oh, this is team registration with the it's endurance series. Where's the actual IMSA race? I wonder how that emission R feels. That car has no brake feel whatsoever. Uh, how about the Porsche again? Thank you. All right, wrapping it up. I'm exhausted and I haven't eaten today and I'm clearly getting hangry. So um, I think the, the moral of the story today is that like it takes a little bit of tuning and we don't really know what we're doing yet. So figure that out. Figure that out. I think they got to do a couple things, man. They got to make the profiles easier to access. Like, I don't know why they don't have it. Like, look here. In the, this software, if I want to go find a profile, I just go here and look for profiles, right? It's very simple and easy to get to here. If I want to create a new profile, right? We have profiles based off of simulator. I can do this, that, that, and save. Well, save. And now I have a profile I can tune. Right, and if I need to edit it, right, we know what to do here. Right, it's not very, it's very easy to do. Here, like, it's like, where do I find my profiles at? Or maybe because I'm just tired, I don't know. I don't know, I think I'm just grumpy. <laughs> this is a different car. Again, we're switching wheels. I wish I just had one wheel to do everything. Yeah, I think we just need more time and I don't really know how much more time I want to put into it because even if I get it to like its max, its max capability, like I don't know if it's, what does that do for me? Okay, your paddle, your pedal jiggles, my whole rig jiggles. I think if you have motion already and you have the effects of the ABS, you're, you're not going to find much value out of this pedal. If you are on a stationary rig and you want to feel something new, my setups. Uh, I think if you want to find something new and exciting for your rig, if you have a GS5, 
and you don't have a full like a full motion system, this would probably be a good addition. You already have motion, you're not really gonna be impressed by it. Exactly, that's exactly what it is. What are you set up more or something? I don't understand. Should work the same as motion platform, so spewing and nut. And that's type load cell, that's hundred percent. That's exactly what's happening here. Alright, one lap and then we're done. This profile feels the best so far though. After a little tuning. Rally Drift here was pretty cool this week, huh? Well, not Rally Drift, um, World Drift Town, the World Drift Championship, I think it was. Okay. I don't know, like coming off of the break is kind of strange, man. I don't know. It, it needs more time. This is the best this is the best setup I've felt so far on it though. Only problem is the pedal's very far up. Um, so I would need to probably position that back a little bit. But this this setup right here for me, for Greg, is the best I've felt so far. And it's a G this semi cube setup. I'm not sure what the hell else is there, but like Yeah, this is I wish it would scale a little differently. Yeah, that's nice, but it goes to... F hmm. I just, uh, yeah, okay. <sighs> We're done. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully you guys got to see what it's like to buy this piece of equipment and see what it's like as a 
user to use it. Um, obviously, there's a lot to learn with this software, and there's going to be profiles out the wazoo. My hope is that there's a somebody creates a really good profile and shares that with um, the audience. But for me, like, I've got to be honest with you. It's a cool pedal, but like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say anything like, oh, it's because then people are going to like run with it. Like for me, it doesn't seem like a big, it's cool. Like it's very cool, but like, I don't know, man, it just doesn't, it's not special in my opinion for me. Um, again, need to maybe go sit down and chill for a little bit and see if I like it tomorrow. But like, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I don't have a more definitive um, conclusion for you, but that wasn't the intention today. It was just to install it, unbox it and see how we like it from the get go. So uh, I'm kind of indifferent on it right now. Um, that may change. Some things change for me. Um, but at the moment, it kind of seems like, you know, why did I buy this? That's how I feel. Anyway, you guys have a great, great night. I hope um, I hope you all got to learn something. If you have any questions, please obviously ping me on Discord or um, hit me up on Instagram. I'm happy to have a conversation with you. I may jump on Twitch tomorrow and do some streaming and just tuning a little bit more. But, um, you know, I just kind of want my four hours back of my life, really. So. Anyway, the moral of the story is I'm getting out of here, and you guys should have a terrific night. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you all for watching. That didn't change my scene. No, nope. I'll have to change it myself manually. Yeah. Yep, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Nine o'clock.